Hello and welcome. My name is Waldo, and this is the video that many of you have been waiting for. I'm going to be painting this truck. The goal is to do a professional quality paint job, or at least as well as my skills and equipment allow. If you'd like to see how you can do a professional quality paint job in your garage or shop, stay tuned. We're doing a Cummins swap. This is it, my 1995 C3500HD. We're swapping a 24 valve Cummins into it, along with a 5 speed Eaton Fuller transmission out of a Freightliner. The goal is to have a capable and comfortable truck for towing and hauling future projects. What do you want? It's a cheap stud welder from Harbor Freight. As the leaves turn colors and the days grow shorter, I find myself racing against the weather to get this painting done before the days get too cold to allow paint to dry. Perhaps the most important part of painting is getting a proper surface preparation. For the flat areas that are easy to get to, I'm just using an, a standard orbital sander with 180 grit sandpaper. That's what the primer calls for to properly adhere. In areas where the paint is adhering well to the metal, I'm not actually removing the paint, I'm just scuffing the surface of it so that the primer will adhere to it. For any areas where there are rust, you need to get down to bare metal because the primer will not adhere well to rust. For parts like the underside of this hood, there's a lot of rust and flaking paint, sort of in these nooks and crannies and along the edges of, uh, of metal panels here. This is gonna be really hard to get to with an orbital sander or a sanding block. And well, a sanding block could get to it easily, but it would take a long time to sand that down to bare metal. So what I'm gonna use here is this abrasive blaster. Now this is just a cheap abrasive blaster. I think I got it on Amazon or something. It was, it was pretty inexpensive, but it's actually been working really well. I've already done abrasive blasting on much of the cab of the truck already, but this is probably the last thing I have left to do. Paired with the abrasive blaster is my new 15 and a half CFM air compressor, and that's actually been working really well so far. Uh, it's been maintaining about 110 PSI at the regulator when I'm using the abrasive blaster continuously, so it's been working great. Inside the abrasive blaster, I'm using a coal slag, which has been also been working really well, and it costs about $10 for a 10 pound bag of coal slag. In the past, I have tried using playground sand with it, and it sometimes works okay, but uh, it does have a lot of problems. And the playground sand that I was using, it does have some small rocks mixed in, which clogs the nozzle. It also has a lot of fine particles, which when that mixes with the water coming from the uh, air compressor, it kind of causes mud and it clogs up the nozzle. So, um, I mean, I guess it would be nice to have an air compressor that doesn't create so much water. I'll work on that eventually, but uh, yeah, don't use playground sand. It's cheap, but it doesn't work very well. Just get some coal slag uh, or something like that. It's pretty cheap. I got mine at Tractor Supply, uh, which is, you know, pretty convenient for me. Yeah, I'm gonna be wearing this silly little hood. Uh, you know, this stuff makes a mess and I don't want to get sand all in my hair and my ears and all that stuff. So, uh, this thing works all right. Well, I just ran out of coal slag. I only had a little bit left and I was hoping that it would be enough to do this, but it's not. So I guess I gotta run back to tractor supply. I've already used 80 pounds of coal slag on this project. And uh, I guess I'm gonna pick up, I don't know, another bag or two that should do it. A little while later. And here's the finished result. 
The abrasive blaster did a great job of turning the rusty, peeling hood into a paintable surface. All right, with the bottom of the hood all sandblasted, uh, it's now time to sand the top surface of the hood. And I'm gonna be using a Diablo 180 grit sand net, a uh, piece of sandpaper for an orbital sander. Uh, these things actually work pretty well. So this surface here is, is a bit glossy, is also quite dirty, and it looks like it might actually be a little bit sun damaged. I wonder if they, when they resprayed this, if they didn't use paint that's UV resistant. Uh, this spot up here is where I bondoed in the last episode. Uh, this spot here, I sanded down to bare metal. That was a rusty spot. And right here is also a spot that was rusty. This one I actually sandblasted rather than sanded. So yeah, I'm just gonna go over this and you know, it'll, it'll look nice and clean when I'm done with it because all this dirt and crap will come off. And there it is, the hood is one step closer to being ready for paint. I still have some other parts of the truck that I need to sand down. I'm not gonna bother filming those because it's more of the same. Next, I need to apply seam sealer to the seams in the body panels. I'm just gonna be using this AC Delco seam sealer. It's white in color. They actually come in a bunch of different colors. It really doesn't matter what you use because, or at least for me, I'm gonna be painting over it. So, so there's some seams right here that had seam sealer in it, but it was old, it was cracked, it was dried up. So I went ahead and removed it and I'm gonna be uh, just filling this up with fresh seam sealer. Now I already did the other side of the vehicle uh, just to get some practice. And for that I used some 3M uh, black seam sealer. Uh, it worked pretty well. So we'll see how this AC Delco works. I'm also gonna be applying it to the joints that I welded up um, and other areas like, for example, where the rocker panel meets the floor pan needs seam sealer. But uh, this is a pretty good area to film because it's pretty easily accessible. So let's get it done. And I'm just gonna use my finger to kinda of spread it out, smush it into the joint. There are other ways to do it, like using paint brushes or whatever, but finger, a gloved finger works just fine. And there it is, it's not exactly pretty, but it doesn't have to be, that's gonna be hidden by uh, body panels. So I've got all the seam sealer applied, I've done a bunch of masking, and I have all the removable body panels hung throughout the shop. So I'm about ready to start painting. All right, well this is it. This is the last warm weather day that we have forecasted for the rest of the year. The high today is 70 degrees. It's pretty dry out, uh, as in not humid. Uh, so it's actually a really good day for painting. That being said, this evening it is gonna get fairly cold, and then the forecast for the next week or so uh, the te high temperatures are in the 50s or low 60s, which is not ideal for painting. I know I can get away with doing the clear coat uh, in temperatures as low as 55 degrees, but as far as everything else goes, I'm not quite sure. So um, I have a lot of painting to get done today. I don't actually think I'm gonna be able to get all the coats on today. So I guess we're just gonna see what happens, but I'm gonna be starting out with the Summit Racing uh, Epoxy Primer and it's a two-part solution. It mixes one to one. It's got the catalyst here and the, the primer here. And I'm gonna be doing two coats of this and everything is gonna be getting coated with this. I'll be using the Anest Iwata Air Gunsa AZ3 HTE2 HVLP spray gun. Uh, what a mouthful that is. I think this was like, I don't know, 100 or 150 bucks. So it's a pretty decent quality gun. Uh, made in Italy, not China. So that's nice for a change. 
So we'll see how it does. I think this stuff, once it's mixed, it has a pot life of about 90 to 120 minutes. So that's actually not bad, but I don't want to mix any extra. I'm just going to mix what I can fit in the gun for now. I keep getting leaves and acorns falling out of the trees above me, and I'm just hoping that none fall in this make a mess. So I'm doing my best to stir up any solids that fell to the bottom. I think I'm going to put the top back on this and then shake it up. But I'll get best results if I stir it first. stuff is a little tricky to measure because it's so thick, it takes a while to level out. Okay. That made a mess. Yeah, I ended up pouring about 450 milliliters of this, and it worked out pretty well. I could do a little bit more, though. After the epoxy primer, I'll be spraying on a high build primer. The idea is that I can hide minor imperfections by applying a thick layer and then sanding down the high spots. Next, I'll apply a sealer to create a barrier between the primer and the base coat of paint. After the sealer comes the base coat. This is the actual layer of paint that supplies the color to the finish. In this case, I'm using a two-stage paint, which requires the use of a clear coat. Since the paint itself is not a durable coating, the clear coat provides durability and UV protection. Lastly, I'll be trying out this POR15 two-part urethane coating on parts like the engine and transmission mounts. If this works well, I may end up using it again when I build a flatbed for the truck. I used a GoPro to record a time lapse of all the priming and painting, so cue the music and let's get to it.
Before I apply the clear coat, I just want to go over some spraying technique for use with an air gun like this. Now, when you're spraying with this, you want to hold it a consistent distance away from your workpiece. Uh, in this case, about five to seven inches. This control back here actually controls how wide the fan is. You typically, for a flat surface like this, you want it to be a pretty wide fan. And when you're spraying, keep it that consistent five to seven inches away. You go straight across. And then when you do your second pass, you want there to be some overlap with the first pass. The instructions for your coating will tell you if you need to do a wet coat or a medium wet coat. A wet coat being it applies a rather thick layer of coating down so that it's fully wet. And a medium wet coat is not quite as wet, but still fairly wet. If it says to apply a light coat, it is exactly what it says, just a light coat. With the clear coat in particular, it's really important to get a nice wet coat over the whole panel before it dries. In any areas where I spray too much clear coat, I'll get drips. In any areas where I don't spray enough clear coat, I'll end up with sort of like an orange peel texture. I'd like to avoid both of those, but in either case, after it dries, I may be able to sand it and buff it down so that it'll look nice and smooth. So don't get too stressed out because you can hopefully fix it after the fact. much later. I just finished applying the clear coat and now it's time to do the unmasking. I always enjoy this part because it's like a reveal of sorts. It's exciting to see it start to look like a truck again. Of course I painted the grill too, so let's see what this looks like. I painted the center part of the grill glossy black with the urethane, the same urethane that I used uh, for the motor mounts and transmission mounts and other various parts. I'm not sure if glossy was really the right way to go, but that's what I had, so that's what I went with. I guess if it looks bad, I can always sand it down and paint it a matte color. Oh no! Oh, that's terrible. All right, well, I guess I didn't mask the back of it, so while I was painting, uh, all the metal flakes from the paint were floating all over the place. They really got over everything. They came in through the back of the grill and made this a very metallic, shiny. That looks terrible. Okay, I'm going to have to do something about this. That looks pretty bad. I guess it probably looks okay from a distance, but... I'm not happy with that. I'll call it good. Another thing that's kind of exciting is I bought a cab visor and I took this opportunity to paint it so it would match the rest of the truck. Um, now, I'm a northerner and I like cool temperatures, not hot temperatures. So this will reduce the amount of sun that comes into the cab, provide more shade, therefore it'll reduce cab temperatures. And that is very welcome uh, by me. As you figured out by now, I decided to go with a metallic silver paint. Most of the body panels came out fairly well. The biggest exception is the hood. I found it really hard to see what I was doing, and the hood ended up with several drips in the clear coat. I should be able to fix the imperfections by sanding them down and then polishing the clear coat to restore its glossy shine. For some reason, bugs seem to love landing on a freshly painted surface. I assure you, this will be the last job that this little guy will ruin. The holes you can see in the fenders are actually used to mount the fender flares. I've been putting a lot of thought into how to end this video, and the obvious ending is to reassemble the truck and reveal it. Unfortunately, due to the cool temperatures, I'm afraid to handle the panels and risk ruining the paint job until it has some more time to dry. I also have a lot of engine swap related stuff to do, which will be easier with the panels removed. 
Rest assured, you will see the truck reassembled in a future video, so hit that subscribe button so you don't miss anything. I think soon I'll probably put out a short video where I fix the drips in the clear coat. I ordered a random orbit polisher to help with that. My next full length video will probably be on Dino, my backhoe. He has what looks like hydraulic fluid leaking into the crankcase. I suspect it's leaking from the gear driven power steering pump, since I also noticed that the steering is heavier and the hydro boost brakes require more force than normal. I plan on removing the pump and disassembling it to see if I can repair it. As for the Cummins Eaton swap, I still have a lot of stuff to do like working on the clutch release, fabricating a new drive shaft, and lots of electrical wiring, in addition to other stuff too. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down below. Thank you for watching.